Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel and of course, as always, let's go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin market. As of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is around $43,000. <laughs> the funny thing is, yesterday when I was recording the video, Bitcoin was about $43,000 and as soon as I finished, BTC dropped to like $42,300. I'm like, oh my gosh, this day of volatility. But here we are, let's see where Bitcoin will be when I will upload this video on YouTube. I hope this is not going to happen, whatever happened yesterday. I'm hoping for like mid 43,000 to like 44k. 44k would be quite nice and the Bitcoin reaches $44,000, that would be like new, like 3 weeks high. But anyway guys, volatility will always be there. We have volatility in this 18 hourly chart and we have much greater volatility as we zoom out, especially in this 2 weekly chart. Yes, volatility is very good on the upside but not so good on the downside. Yes, in the first cycle, BTC went up from $2, that was the bottom, all the way to the top, 1000 bucks. So that would be 500x. And then of course we had huge downside correction, 85% drop. Oh Jesus, not many people can handle 85% correction. And of course, followed by another huge bull market, 2016, 2017, Bitcoin from the bottom went up from $200 all the way to $20,000, that would be 100X. And then followed by another massive 85% drop in 2018, 2019. And then of course, 2020, 2021, we had another bull run. Bitcoin went from $3,000 all the way to 69K, uh, that would be well, like more than 20x, something like that, followed by another 75% correction. So it seems like in this last cycle we had less upside and less downside. Does that mean volatility subsides? Well, I would not go there, at least not yet. I think volatility is still there probably for maybe like 5 to 10 years. But anyway guys, let's see, the main reason why I'm showing you this chart because yes, volatility will always be there and you should not be scared of volatility because volatility creates opportunity. Imagine if you buy BTC at 200 bucks and sell at $20,000, you make 100x, that's what I mean, this is opportunity. But on the flip side, yes, if you buy Bitcoin 69k and sell at $17,000, you are probably should not be in the Bitcoin in the first place. Additionally, we can see that 100 week simple moving average, it fits very well in this 2 weekly chart. Yes, positive momentum indeed. If you guys care to volatility, just delete Bitcoin price action and this is what you're going to get. You're just going to get nice positive upside momentum. So if let's say if Bitcoin would be this, wouldn't you buy Bitcoin? Of course you would. But because many investors believe that Bitcoin is too volatile, that's why they do not want to get in. Alright guys, Bitcoin very good index. Today we are at 64, we are on grid relatively higher where we were back yesterday and even last week. Yesterday we were at 60. Today I would say price is more or less similar than it was back uh, yesterday. But I think it depends where BTC is going to be by the end of the day. If BTC will finish this day above like 43.5 or even $44,000, I think tomorrow we might even be in like high 60s. Let's see. The next Bitcoin market sentiment indicator, that would be Bitcoin Google Trend. I think this is by far my favorite Bitcoin sentiment indicator. <laughs> Look at this, right now we are at 19. And when BTC spot the F, has been approved we were at 39 so basically the hype dropped by two times but you may ask why drop of course because bc price dropped bc price dropped by 20 percent and of course a bitcoin hype bitcoin market hype drop respectively but let's not forget that what happened late 2021 when bitcoin hit 69 thousand dollars bitcoin google trend literally went through the roof it hit 100 and that was the new all-time high so right now we are at 19, that would be 5x lower than we were back in late 2021. Yes, if Bitcoin hits uh, 69k, it means Bitcoin will have to gain additional, well, like $17,000. So yes, that would be maybe like 30-40%, something like that. But anyway guys, let's move on to the next topic and of course that would be Bitcoin Spot ETFs updates. This is probably my favorite chart in the recent uh, weeks. 
Yes, as we can see, as of yesterday, BlackRock has inflow of more than $137 million, while Fidelity, $38 million. Yes, Fidelity needs to catch up. But anyway, guys, the good news is, look at this, Grayscale. Grayscale outflow is only $107 million. That would be by far the lowest number since day one. Yes, even if you take a look at the last couple of days, as we can see, we had 200 million, 180, 182, 140, and now we have 100 million outflow. So yes, we can see outflow is definitely subsides, and of course, it means that Bitcoin selling pressure is subsides respectively. But overall, so far, Grayscale sold more than six billion dollars worth of bitcoin <laughs> oh man yes it's just because of the damn fees but on the flip side we have a uh, blackrock is almost at 3.2 billion dollars and fidelity is more than 2.5 billion dollars not bad so the total net flow would be more than 1.5 billion dollars yesterday we were positive yesterday we were at 68 million but if you add all this uh together day by day of course will be like more than 1.5 billion so yes this is definitely fantastic chart a grayscale minus 6 billion dollars blackrock is positive at 3.2 billion fidelity 2.5 billion bitwise more than 600 million ARK more than 600 million so once again total net flow is more than 1.5 billion dollars I am very bullish what is going to happen in the mid to long term. Yes, guys, continue stacking because this is definitely not too late. Alright, guys, moving on. Satoshi Nakamoto, eventually at most only 21 million coins for 6.8 billion people in the world. Well, that was back, well, like 2009, 2008, something like that. And now we have <laughs> roughly 8 billion people. So, people population continues to increase while you cannot increase BTC supply. In fact, everything increases, production increases around the world, inflation increases, uh, people increase, but Bitcoin will not increase. Uh, that's the beauty of Bitcoin. Some people say, yes, you have to buy shit coins to get rich. If you buy shit coin, the probability for you to get rich is very slim, but for you to get broke is highly likely. But if you buy Bitcoin, you know what you're buying. You're buying into strong fundamentals, and of course, the price will catch up with fundamentals eventually. Maybe not now, maybe not tomorrow, but it will happen in the next few years. So yes, guys, continue stacking sets. Alright guys, so moving on. Bitcoin is a digital gold. $9 trillion BlackRock CEO Larry Fink. Yes, good job later, you finally waking up because of course you stack and shit load of BTC. Moving in on substitution of gold for Bitcoin is now underway, says Kathy Wood. Let's take a look. Investors have started to move from gold to Bitcoin after the launch of spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, according to CEO ARK Invest. Relative to gold, Bitcoin has been rising. There is now substitution into Bitcoin and we think that is going to continue. Now there is less friction field way to access Bitcoin, said ARK Invest Katy Wood. Oh man, yes, I am definitely bullish. Larry Fink thinks this digital gold. Katy Wood thinks this is digital gold. And let's not forget that gold market cap is well, like $13 trillion. If Bitcoin flips gold, one coin would be over seven hundred fifty thousand dollars per single coin well i do not expect this to happen next week or next year but i think by the end of the decade bitcoin will flip gold in fact this chart represents a bitcoin to gold ratio right now btc price well like forty three thousand dollars gold still remains at two thousand dollars so for one bitcoin you can buy roughly 21 ounces of gold but in 2016, that was not the case. In fact, in early 2017, uh, one Bitcoin was like $2,000, while a gold still was at $2,000 10 years ago. So um, in that point, you could have bought one ounce of gold for one Bitcoin, and now you can buy 21 ounces of gold for only one Bitcoin. Yes, guys, Bitcoin is definitely winning. Here's now the following chart. This chart represents cumulative flow into Bitcoin funds and gold ETF holdings. As we can see that Bitcoin funds will be in this bluish color and gold funds would be in this black color. Yes, 2019, 2020, we saw massive flows in Bitcoin and uh, gold funds respectively. However, after 2020, uh, Bitcoin 
quickly finds remain steady and this is because uh, grayscale grayscale was closed and fun you can go in but you cannot come out therefore we have not seen any selling pressure from grayscale but since uh, gptc has been converted into exchange traded fund now you can go both ways but anyway since 2020 we can see that gold etfs have been declining in outflows while uh, bitcoin has been remained steadily and after bitcoin spot you have approval we can see the uptick of course net inflows right now is positive <laughs> while gold continues to decline so in few words this chart describes that bitcoin demonetizes gold maybe in the next 10 years uh, gold's market cap will decline from 13 trillion to like 5 trillion while btc will be a 10 plus trillion we'll see and lastly let's take a look at this quick video with samsung mo an early bitcoin adopter and of course ceo of gen3 will explain where he see bitcoin going next let's take a look but you brought up the etfs so let's just get into it because you were extremely bullish right now right you, you think that we're we're headed into six digits um you know that's an imminent around the corner from these etfs uh you're kind of tweeting about how this is a huge deal so you said 1 million Bitcoin, Omega candles. Uh, let's get your thoughts around that. You know, right now people are a little disappointed, I think, about of, of the short term price action after these ETFs. Uh, maybe they expected this to just go blast up right away. But um, you think that, you know, these GBTC outflows and that that's all a distraction, right? So maybe let's summarize your views and, and for the listeners. Well, you kind of put in a, a summary already. So the problem, I think, is that we were encumbered by people trading GPTC for profit. And we don't know their motivations or how many of them there are, but it definitely feels like it's running out. So because the, of all the things SEC did, we didn't have approvals until now. And then you have Bitcoin locked into GBDC because they couldn't convert it to an ETF prior to the approval recently. So what happened was it was trading at a discount. So you have people trying to come in and ARP that trade uh, with the assumption that it will be converted. So you have a lot of capital that went into GPTC with the intention of just cashing out in fiat, not necessarily because they want um, a Bitcoin ETF or they want Bitcoin. So that had to get flushed out and converted. And also because GPTC has super high fees, people are also exiting if they can exit too. And I, I ran a calculation. I think uh, if you're moving from GPTC at 1.5% into, um, I don't know, um, uh, pick one, Bitwise, at 0.2, uh, or even one of the ones at 0.25, you'll you'll basically re take a tax hit when you cash out of GPTC, but you'll recover in about 12 years time. So if your plan is to hold anywhere longer than 12 years, it makes sense to, to take that tax hit and move because you'll benefit in the long run. So I think some of the, the flushing out of um, GPTC holdings and AUM is people that have done that same calculation and figured it out as well. So. We have to kind of discount that because when you're looking at markets and you're looking at macro analysis, you have to disregard the noise. And GBDC is largely noise. It's it's a, in the words of someone I know, <laughs> not my words, it is a cursed product from a cursed company. So you have to kind of get rid of that curse first before we get to see the real action. But if you can see past the noise, then the signal is there. And the signal is you have a massive amount of accumulation on all the new nine. Um, GB, uh, uh, IBIT and uh, Fidelity, FBTC, they're raking in about 200 to 175 million per day on average on every trading day. And if you calculate that in BTC terms, that's about roughly almost 9,000 coins and we're producing 900 a day. So mm -hmm. you can see that it's not sustainable and there is going to be a supply crunch because you have this massive amount of demand. But I think people don't see that because they're not seeing the price go up immediately. But, you know, Bitcoin seems to surprise a lot of people. It moves very quickly and it does go up very quickly, too. In the past, we've seen 20x in nine months. And I think with this new source of demand, you can easily 20x in weeks. Well, uh, Samsung explained that Grayscale right now is a noise. Of course, we see a lot of outflow from GPTC. But if you dismiss noise if you take a look at the cover if you take a look at the fundamentals the signal is there and he thinks bt can skyrocket by like 20x in few weeks <laughs> 20x would put btc above eight hundred thousand dollars 
Well, I hope it's going to happen. Imagine Bitcoin price is a ball under the water and eventually it will skyrocket. But the question is when and I think it's going to happen probably Q3, Q4 this year. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below, subscribe and like this video.